Hello and uh, welcome to your annual, hey Dave listened to a lot of music so he's going to tell you all about it and do you really care? Who knows? So um, yeah, again, another year, another banner year of listening to a lot of music. This year it was uh, 223 new records that I listened to. Uh, again, I don't know, last year I just got this bug in my ear and I said, you know what, I'm going to just listen to a bunch of records and that I hadn't listened to before. I used um, Rolling Stone's top 500 greatest records of all time, went mostly off of that, and then Suggestions of Friends. This year is a little bit different because uh, Christmas of 2020, my daughter bought a record player for us. And uh, when I say us, I mean really me because I'm the one who went out and just started purchasing a ton of jazz records because I decided that I was going to collect jazz records instead of punk rock records now. So um, years passed, I bought a lot of records, listened to a lot of records, listened to stuff suggested by friends again, listened to stuff I found on lists, and well, I'm going to do another top 20 and hopefully uh, you'll stick around and you'll listen. If not, then cool. Yeah. So here we go. So again, uh, last year, uh, this year I mean, I listened to about 223 records. Of course, me being the geek that I am, I logged them all down in my little book. And I wrote them all down. You can see the highlighted ones are the ones I really enjoy throughout the year. Yeah, you know, see if you pause and zoom in, you can see all the records I listened to. You know, you can be impressed or not impressed. I don't know. It's up to you. But the impression is, um, there's another page. And yep, that's it. So 223 records I found. 20 records that I really, 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 really enjoyed, and I'm going to tell you about them because that's what these things are about. So, without further ado, again, my first record of 2021. Granted, a lot of these records are really old, so hopefully if you've listened to them, you agree with me, and if you haven't, go out and listen to them because I think they're really good, but really, does my opinion matter? I don't know. You're the one who's listening. So, first record is by a legend. She is, I mean, I don't really have to say much about her, but uh, it's Aretha Franklin with uh, Young, Gifted, and Black. Um, just Aretha, come on, man. I mean, and spoiler alert, she's on the list again later on, way high in the top 20. So we started her at a 20. There's another record. Maybe you want to guess it. Cool. If you do, you can put in the comments. Um, another record is going to be in the top 20. So yeah, that was... Uh, um, Aretha. Um, record number 19. Uh, this is actually a vinyl record I bought. Um, this is uh, the Horace Silver Quintet at Village Gate. There's the record. It's a Blue Note. This is a newer copy. I can't afford an original pressing because holy shit, they're very expensive. So this is a repressing by Blue Note. Um, great, great, great record. Um, he starts it off with an introduction. It's live at this legendary club in New York called Village Gate um, and he starts it off and just talks to the audience and hey you're gonna get recorded and we're gonna need you to join along and clap and do whatever and then he introduces the song the first song is called Filthy McNasty yeah that song's pretty filthy and pretty McNasty and filthy in a good way and the one cool thing I really like about jazz records and some you know other soul records too is um back in the day you didn't we didn't have Google we didn't have Wikipedia we had to read the back of the record and just imagine what it was like. Now, jazz records come with like a full story. Just like, I mean, it's a lot of words. A lot, a lot of words talking about, you know, this record about Horace Silver. All, you know, they, they never fail to mention everybody else, you know, like, which I will do now. Blue Mitchell played trumpet, Junior Cook, tenor sax, Horace Silver, you know, named leader of the band, played piano, Gene Taylor on bass, and Roy Brooks on drums. And then they go into these great stories and they talk about like how each song, you know, like how they chose it, how they, they accompany it. And then they talk about each person and who they played with and like what they are. And this is really cool. I mean, I think jazz people really got to feel that they knew, they know who these people are because of the way the stories are just kind of written out on these, uh, the back of these records. So if you've never looked at the back of a jazz record, highly suggest you do. Again, they do it on some soul stuff too. Um, a lot of stuff, you know, from the 50s and 60s had a lot of this on it, and it's kind of neat. It gave you your, it was basically your Wikipedia on the back of an album. So, anyway, 
Next record up, let me get the my super duper highly technical stuff using my iPad. Um, this record was suggested by a friend of mine who knows I'm I like soul music, and I had actually never heard of her. Her name is um Betty Swan, and uh, she falls right in that Aretha, uh, Etta James. Uh, Billy Holiday, like bluesy um, soul singers. Um, I think she's like a like a female Otis Redding. Just really beautiful songs. Now this this is a compilation, so it was released in the two thousands. I'd never heard of her. My friend just sent me this. He said, "Hey, you gotta listen to Betty Swan." I was like, "Okay," and I downloaded it. And yeah, thank you, friend. You know who you are if you're listening. Um, just so good. Um, again, really soulful, soulful jazz in a kind of an Otis Reddy feeling. Just, yeah, I said, yeah, it's great. All right, next. Got another record for you. Um, now everybody's familiar with this band because their song, uh, Take Five, has been played in a ton of commercials. And you heard this is uh, Dave Brubeck, and this is um, the album called Time Further Out. Now, the famous record is Time Out. The other, um, this is the, you know, basically kind of building upon that. They basically wrote this whole record to kind of interpret this painting. Um, I should read what the painting is called. Um, Miro Reflections. Um, it's a, a, a John Miro painting from 1925. So basically they wrote uh, the Brubeck, and I'm no musician. I mean, I did play guitar, but I'm not a musician. They would write, you know, they the way they wrote songs is really interesting. Time signatures are really strange and, you know, not your four fours. It just like went all over the place. So two fours. I mean, t this this album, again, kind of goes into explaining, you know, the, the process of the record. I mean, and it kind of tells you what each, you know, song was written in. You know, Raggedy Waltz is written in three four and um, Bluette is written in three four and Far More Blue is written in five four. Now, the beauty of Dave Rubeck Quartet is... um. You know, it's named after Dave Brubeck, who, you know, is the piano player. But in my opinion, Paul Desmond, who is the alto sax player, makes this band. If you've ever listened to Take Five, um, he has a way of playing the alto sax that it doesn't make it sound like it's brass. It makes it sound like it's like some kind of rich wood instrument. Now, again, I'm not an expert in musicianship, but... There's something beautiful about Paul Desmond's um, playing. Um, he wrote a lot of the songs with Dave Brubeck. So he actually wrote Take Five, which kind of makes sense because that song's all about the, the sax. Anyway, Dave Brubeck at number 16 with Time Further Out. If you've never listened to Time Out, it's a great record too. Time Further Out gets a little bit more experimental. Still beautiful. All right, number 15. Um... But this is a band that I listened to. Oh my God, I skipped. I totally skipped. So we're gonna go back. <laughs> Number 17. Um, it's another artist, the same friend who suggested Betty Swan, suggested this guy. His name is John Baptiste. Uh, the song, the, the record is called Hollywood Africans. Now this is a, nor this is a newer album. I'm not 100% sure when it was released. But he is definitely old school New Orleans jazz, but with this really classical feel to it. He does like, uh, it's just really good. Another fine suggestion by the same friend who suggested Betty Swan. He won again with this suggestion. We've been suggesting records back and forth all year long. I'm sure some of the records I've suggested, he's like, no, thank you. And But these two records he suggested to me, mm, really good. John Baptiste, Hollywood Africans. Modern day jazz, but feels old with a classical spin to it. So let's go back into the list. I skipped John Baptiste. I went into Dave Brubeck. Now we're going into 15. Number 15. This is a band that uh, I really got into during the Napster days. Now, you youngins out there who are listening, probably none of you except for my daughter, maybe, but she'll probably skip over this. Napster was a pre Spotify, pre, you had to create your own stuff. Everybody shared and then. Metallica sued Napster because their music, music was, they were not making any money from their music. So they sued Napster and Napster went away. But what you would do is you go online and you would basically be able to download whatever you wanted. So I downloaded a shit ton of this band, the old 97s. 
Um, the record is Too Far to Care. It's actually the expanded version. So recently I was like, oh, you know, I haven't listened to it in a while. And I have a couple of them downloaded, but I was like, you know, I got to listen to Old 97. So I downloaded the record. I realized I had listened to the whole record when I was downloading stuff back. You know, Napster days, you just downloaded songs. So you never really knew if you had a full record unless you did a lot of research. Not a lot of research. You basically typed in and said, hey, what's all these songs in this record? I diverged. Um, yeah, Old 97 is great. Alt, they called it Alt Country. It was kind of cool back in the days. Um, and when I say back in the days, the early, late 90s, early 2000s, Alt Country was kind of a big thing. Wilco, Ryan Adams, um, Whiskey Town. Old 97s were one of those bands. It still survives to this day. It's so good. Um, this record is great. It's got some great hits on it. Um, if you remember Napster, this was a big band for me on Napster. Maybe, I don't know what bands were big for you on Napster. Maybe it was Limp Bizkit. I don't know. I'm not judging. But if it was Limp Bizkit, I'm, yeah, I'm judging you. Uh, number 14. Now the record. This is a uh, amazing, amazing, amazing tenor sax player who uh, basically played with a lot of legends. Played with Miles Davis. Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I can't really name anybody. But I'm trying to sound cool, but I'm not. Um, Hank, it's the Hank Mobley Sextet um, with Hank, the name of the record, Hank. Again, another story on the back. This is a Blue Note record. Again, I couldn't buy the original because the original is super duper expensive. So I went, not necessarily cheap, but I went the uh, more frugal way and I got it through Blue Note. Um, uh, you can, Blue Note, you can order online or you can just download it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever you choose. Great, 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 great tenor sax player in the vein of Coltrane. A little bit more warm than Coltrane, less experimental than Coltrane. Just really beautiful, beautiful melodies. I love it. So good, so good, so good. Okay, I had to do a little edit because I said something wrong, so I'm going to redo this. Number 13 is Utah Hip with Zoot Sims. Zoot Sims. So this record, another Blue Note record, uh, I feel... I kind of learned about this from uh, Discogs, their website, and it said it was one of the most expensive records bought that year. You know, that year, someone paid like seven hundred fifty dollars for original copy of this. Again, this is not an original copy. This is a Blue Note reissue. Um, super good, um, just amazing piano. Zoot Sims, great tenor sax player. Um, again, you know, stories on the back. You just, you know, you think you you feel like you get to know the process of what this record. How this record was um, achieved. Just so good. Um, I highly suggest it. Download it. Don't buy the original copy unless you're super rich. If not, you can probably get it for like 24 bucks at Blue Note when they have sales. Great stuff. All right, number 12. This one just made it into my list uh, right yesterday because I bought it while I was in the mainland. This is Tony Bennett with Count Basie and his orchestra. It's called In Person. It's a live concert with uh, Tony Bennett, really young Tony Bennett. He just recently just did a, his last concert with um, uh, Lady Gaga. Tony Bennett's a legend, obviously, you know, in the days of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, all those guys. Tony Bennett's voice on this, unfucking believable And I'm gonna curse because that's how good it is. This, it's, it's such a good record. I just bought it, just listened to it yesterday. I was like, well, this is on my list. This is on my list because this is amazing. Download it, buy it. I got this one for eight, uh, five bucks. Well, five dollars. I got it. So I'm sure you can find it locally, wherever you are. I highly suggest it. And finally, number eleven. As we close this out. Um. So my friend, another different friend than the one who's been suggesting me records, um, kind of pointed out to me that I should listen to the. Uh, Female-led records. Excuse me, I dropped something. Um, so, if you look at the Rolling Stone Top 500, there's a lot of missing records that should be there that are female-led. And um, so my friend was like, hey, I heard this podcast. Um, they're talking about how female artists are so influential, but they're not really recognized. So he told me to look it up. I listened to the podcast. They talked about this 150 Greatest Records Um by female artists, they led by female artists. Um, this is the record, this is the list. So I've been going through it, a lot of them. The orange is the ones I've actually listened to before this year. Um, yellow is 
of the ones I listened to. Pink is I tried, just wasn't my, my thing, but I did try. So I'm going through this list right now. I started in September. Um, one of the bands, they were, um, they came in at, let me find them. Oh, they came in at number 150 on this list. It's from NPR. So NPR, 150 Greatest Female Artists Albums of All Time. You'll find this. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. So it's the Roches. Um, and these girls, women, excuse me, they're much older than I am. This was released in the 70s, are amazing. The harmonies they create from uh, just the three of them are insane. Apparently, Bob Dylan really liked them. Paul Simon really liked them. Hello, Wikipedia. Um, so good. So this is the Roches, and the, the title of the album is Roches. So that is it for the top uh, this is the top 20, so numbers 20 through 11, that is it. I will be doing 10 through 1, 1, tomorrow, and uh, hopefully you have made it through my talking, and we'll see you again soon.